Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot. I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. I'm using that time to attempt to visit every civil parish in England. You're watching the North Kesteven series. This is a large Lincolnshire district centred around the town of Sleaford. There's 75 parishes here, so let's take a look at one of them. Welcome back to North Kesteven, everybody. The sun's come out now, the glasses are on and the hat is on too. And I'm looking very summery. Finally, summer appears to be here. Now, I'm beginning this one on a parish boundary. You can see here we've got a sign which has got the name of one parish on one side and one on the other side. This is going to be one continuous walk. Uh, so I'll split it into two when I get back. Uh, obviously home and editing these two. The one to the south is the one I'm doing second and that as you can see is Wellingore but I'm beginning this monumental walk with the parish of Navenby. Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. This week in North Kesteven, we hit Navenby. Alongside Waddington, this is the biggest of the cliff villages and used to be a market town centuries ago. It's centered upon a wide main street down which farmers once drove their sheep to market, which is lasting evidence of its market town status. A market square once stood at the center, marked by a cross in honor of Queen Eleanor. Today, the square has gone and the cross is a ruin. Parish records show the village hosted several annual fairs every year and a feast on the Thursday before Easter. Such was the significance of Navenby in the 16th century, a workhouse once existed here too. In the early 19th century though, Navenby's status as a market town wavered and it's since reverted to being a village again. But let me tell you folks, this is some village. Its high street still proudly shows off the coaching inns, stone cottages and religious buildings of days past, but the modern settlement is like 21st century commuter heaven. Navenby has grown considerably over the past few decades and is one of the most affluent villages in Lincolnshire. Amongst its major landmarks is the Church of St Peter and a small museum named in honour of its last resident. That in itself is a window to the past, all contained within one small building. There's loads more to see and learn about in this one. Let's get to it and see what else I came across. Our route begins on Navenby's border with Wellingore. This is Pottergate, a long straight road to the southeast of the main Navenby village. Straight away, we've got landmarks. This small patch of allotments, I'm sure, will keep the fans happy for another day. Pottergate runs into a triangular shaped junction with the A607, Grantham Road. We're heading north. Our first major landmark is Navenby's Village Hall. Known as the venue, this opened its doors in 2012. The Parish Council office is based here and several local events take place within its three various sized function rooms. The Parish Notice Board can be found on its wall and now Navenby can no longer be found on the North Kesteven list. Activities that take place at the venue include music events and choir practice and football on the playing field behind it. 
Navenby also has a bowls club here too. Founded in 1988, they participate in four outdoor bowls leagues. A footpath then links us to Doncaster Gardens as we wind our way now through Navenby's residential streets. Modern Navenby can be termed a commuter village. The United Kingdom census in 2001 found it had some 861 households. The population growth has been more than 70% over the past 30 years, mainly due to ongoing house building projects. Navenby's residents enjoy a high employment rate, although most work outside the village, around 600 commute every day. The village does, however, offer some work opportunities along the high street, which we'll come to in a short while. So not a lot to see so far, but fear not, there's plenty to catch further around this route. Navenby is one of those villages where all its main stuff is laid out on the main road. This, in this case, it's the A607. So we're working our way towards that. During World War II, the estates off Chapel Lane were heathlands, but they did have some temporary housing on them. Wooden searchlight buildings were used as ad hoc accommodation until 1949, when they were replaced by airy houses. Via the open space we've just seen between Chapel Lane and East Road, next we have the village's cemetery. That can be found on the end of Ermine Drive, whose name is a reference to the Roman road, Ermine Street. That's because the village sits right on it. Today, the stretch through Navenby is what we know as High Dyke to the east. Next, it's left into Centurion Close in order to pick up a narrow footpath that goes all the way around Navenby School. Here is that school, Navenby C of E Primary, which is a voluntary controlled school for children aged 4 to 11. Navenby's children have a choice of secondary school, but the nearest is Sir William Robertson High School in Wellborn. Halfway around the path, you can get back to Ermine Drive by using this handy cut through. It's straight on for us, though. And eventually it comes to an end in Addison Close, a cul-de-sac with a collection of modern bungalows. So you've gathered by now, there's lots of houses here in Navenby. Now there's one house in this village that's more famous than all the others, and it's called Mrs. Smith's Cottage. And we're literally just a couple of yards away from it. Let's go and check it out. On East Road, you'll see this small, attractive green with a large tree. This is next door to Navenby's most famous cottage. That would be Mrs. Smith's Cottage, a local tourist attraction that's an absolute goldmine if you like your history. In essence, the house looks like any other mid-19th century Victorian red brick cottage. It's a Grade 2 listed building too. The cottage is named after its last resident, Mrs Hilda Smith, who lived here until 1995, to the ripe old age of 102. Upon her death, Navenby's villagers mounted a campaign to ensure the cottage was kept as something special. Since 2000, the cottage has been a museum. It's open for much of the year and it's staffed by volunteers. An historical marvel, the cottage has very few modern facilities, and the only access to the bedrooms is by a ladder. Its old pigsty and storage shed were demolished, and the bricks were used to build a purpose-built visitor centre. The centre is used for exhibitions about Navenby and the locality in general. It's well worth a visit if you get a chance. The cottage sits close to East Road Junction with the A607, and nearby there's a couple of local businesses. One of them is the old filling station, a popular local eatery. This had the most wonderful aroma coming from it. Okay, now we've hit the A607 and we're taking a right turn back towards Boothby Graffo. There's a religious building to see up here, and then we're going to basically take a loop around 
these houses here and come back to the A607 to then go south straight down it. Complicated route, I know, but you know, <laughs> I'm trying to catch everything. Heading north on the high street, the first thing we pass is the old manor house at number six. What a lovely grand property. The centre of Navenby is a designated conservation area. Many of the stone and brick built houses date back hundreds of years. It's like stepping back in time. More than 20 properties in the high street alone have listed building status. There are many 19th century buildings and early 20th, including this Methodist church, which dates from 1926. There are some curious little buildings as well, like for example, this hut. I wonder what this was used for? There are some brick buildings here too, as well as stone. Take this one as an example on the corner of Greenman Road. Just before you leave civilization, North Lane appears on the left. Let's follow this and see what's up here. Halfway up North Lane, you'll come to a second playing field with a playground, although this one is much smaller. North Lane used to be the main road through Navenby to Newark until it was deemed too dangerous for horse-drawn vehicles. Along a path to the left, commonly known as Cat Walk, you'll find another communal space, the Church Hall. And seeing as we've just seen the Church Hall, that means the church isn't far away, and it's not. If you carry on down the footpath, which I'm currently on, you will come to the church, and here it is. So this is going to be our next major landmark. Navenby's Grade 1 listed church is dedicated to St Peter. Its parish registers date from 1681. It's difficult to date the building accurately as it has a mishmash of styles, although its origins are probably 13th century. St Peter's is made up of three parts, including a mid-19th century tower which replaced the original which fell down. The tall, decorated chancel has very large windows. The east window was partly rebuilt in 1875 and 76. The churchyard features the War Memorial, a rough-hewn Celtic cross. Navenby lost many men in both world wars. The church also contains an Easter sepulchre. The carving is recognised as one of the finest in Lincolnshire, if not the country. Over the road we find the huge late 18th century manor farmhouse, widely regarded as one of the finest buildings in Navenby. And all of this is on Church Lane, which used to be called Church Street. This also has something else of note. Okay, right next to the church and manor farm you've got an old school. Now this has got a, a stone in the wall which has got a date in Roman numerals. Now my knowledge of Roman numerals is not fantastic so I'm going to read what they are and maybe someone in the comments can tell me what year it is. So they are M-D-C-C-C-X-V-I. Down to you people. Let's walk down the high street now and see what Navenby has to offer commercially. It's quite a lot. First up we have the old reindeer fish shop. For 32 years this family run chippy has been serving the Navenby locals. If it's food you're after, the village can also offer you a Chinese takeaway, a couple of doors down past a hair salon. There's a couple of pubs. That one there is the King's Head. It's 18th century and is believed to be the oldest pub in the village. A lot of the buildings on this road would have been coaching inns. Only the King's Head and the Lion and Royal remain today. Navenby was a market town in the 11th century. Its market fell into disuse in the 19th and it returned to being a village. Here's Navenby Antique Centre, which has been a village landmark since 2007. There's a cafe upstairs too. 
Next is Wellborns, which is a bakery. Not just any bakery, mind you, it's one of the oldest traditional bakeries in Lincolnshire. Here's the Lion and Royal. It dates from 1824 and was originally just called the Lion. Royal was added in 1870. That's when Edward VII stayed there during his time as Prince of Wales. Over the road, we have the old red phone box. It's outside the local co-op. So too is one of the village's bus stops. Once again, Navenby is served by the number one. And I found a box topper as well. Some garden gnomes here. I think they're called gonks these, aren't they? <laughs> they're very, uh, very cute. I love people who do yarn bombing. It's just, it's just, you know, enhances the place somewhat. Brilliant. Today's special section is all about the Navenby Witch Bottle. Discovered in 1999, this unusual object is made of five pieces of green glass, a small strap, human hair, and various corroded metal pins. It would have been used as a charm against evil spirits and to deflect spells. It's likely that the bottle also contained urine, but thankfully, no traces remain today. How it worked is absolutely fascinating. If you thought someone was bewitched, a witch's bottle would have been filled with the sufferer's urine along with some needles and pins. It was then buried. This would then tie the witch up, leaving her unable to pass water naturally until the bottle was broken. The bottles were designed to work even if the witch had not been identified, as any neighbours who fell ill or even died were deemed to be the perpetrator. Navenby's Witch's Bottle is on display in Lincoln at the Museum of Lincolnshire Life. The last section of this walk takes us up a shallow hill towards Wellingore. I've got a few more facts to squeeze in. Some of the streets off this road have interesting names like Maidenwell Lane, Clint Lane and Gas Lane. Gas Lane is a reference to the Provincial Gas Light and Coke Company who supplied gas lighting to the village from 1857. The company is gone, but the street name still remains. On the right now is Urban Angel's hair design. Now the road starts to climb uphill a bit more steeply, but in truth it's not a difficult slog. It's still fairly shallow. The tightly packed central street has now given way to some more isolated detached properties and bungalows. We're almost back at the Pottergate Junction. Just before you leave Navenby, there is one final landmark. That would be the second of the two Cliff Village Surgery branches, which works in partnership with the one we saw in Waddington. And as Navenby starts to become Wellingore, one of that village's landmarks appears on the horizon, an old windmill. And here we are then at the boundary between Navenby and Wellingore. I'm just going to keep on walking, but I will stop the Strava for Navenby. One hour and nine minutes and 29 seconds. Well, 30 seconds now that I've, <laughs> I've actually continued talking there. But there we are. That's the route around Navenby complete. And now I'm just going to carry straight on into Wellingore. This is much smaller than Navenby and will not take me anywhere near the same amount of time. I'll see you back here in seven days time. Thanks for watching this video folks don't forget to like this episode if you haven't already it really makes a difference with youtube if you're new here subscribe to the channel for more videos like this and give us a share too if you've got friends who'd like it you can find all the links to my social media accounts below as well as my buy me a coffee page where you can donate to the channel also if you've enjoyed this episode have a look at some more videos in this series until next time i've been andy also known as the village idiot and i'm out <laughs>